Hey, it's Joe with Jolie Farms. Welcome back to the channel. So what's growing on? We're here today. We're going to show you a little bit about what we've got growing, kind of a follow-up to some of our other gardening videos. Hope you'll stay tuned because it's coming up right after this. Hey, thanks for staying with us. So we're down here in what I call our lower 40. We can dream, can't we? This is just a little backyard section. We have a nice hygge culture bed set up here. I've shown this before, um, but what we've got in here right now is some delicata squash. Man, if you haven't eaten delicata squash, I highly recommend it. Some friends of ours uh, brought us the seeds down from the US, organically grown seeds. And so we planted these. Now these are, they're three months old. You can see they're not growing much. We got another overcast day today. We got really no rain yesterday at all. Three days of overcast, no rain. That doesn't help us. But at least they're blossoming and we're getting some small fruits. Maybe you can see these on here, maybe you can't. But I got a couple of small fruits. We'll see if they stay on very long. Um, these turn into such a beautiful squash. And as you can tell, they're gonna vine out. We got more coming on. And so um, this squash is particularly good because what it does is uh, you, you get to eat the entire thing. You don't have to peel the squash at all. And man, is it beautiful. We were big lovers of the butternut variety of squash, but um, this beats butternut, I just guarantee you, combined with the fact there's less work to cook. And you can just cut them in half, de-seed them, bake them on a, um, uh, a cookie sheet in the oven with some foil down on top of it. And man, do they come out great. Put a little butter with that, or you could do a, you know, a stir fry and a wok. All of it's just really good. A lot of recipes on the uh, internet for that. So I wanted to show you how our squash is doing. This is particularly really good soil in here. We mixed and mixed and mixed the compost in there. And of course, we've got the big logs in the bottom of this that are bringing in all the fungi, and that's uh, helping our plants tremendously. Um, but again, it's just not growing that fast, but it's gonna get there and uh, we're patient people. So what I want to show you next is our, our irrigation and how we water our plants. So hang on, we're going to be right back with that. Okay, in previous videos we've talked about how we do rainwater collection in these great big uh, rain barrels and uh, we've got two of them here on the back of the house but I've got them all over the property. As you can see, the pipe comes down, brings the rainwater in. And then down here at the bottom, I've got it all plumbed in, and there's a very small um, electric pump that pumps all of this, and it can pump out to a water hose or however you like it. These pumps we buy in Loja for about $40 a piece, and uh, man, do they put out the water. But I'm gonna show you a way we water our, um, our the rest of our property when we need to water. And we really like this. Hang on one second. Okay, these are what we call a wobblehead sprinkler. And these guys, they wobble like this as it spins around where the water pressure comes through. And this has been declared the most like raindrops. So we like it. A lot of um, farmers in the U.S. are going to this. Um, this is, these are cheap. I mean, you can get a wobblehead sprinkler for five or six bucks here in Ecuador. And they come in different um, uh, GPHs, different gallons per hour. This is the green one, so I don't know exactly. I mean, you can Google it and look that up. But we um, have these nice little stands welded so we can just push them into the ground wherever we want them. And then we connect them with, with hoses. You could do this with uh, flexible mangara. Um, we use water hoses. It's easier and easier to disconnect. So I can get three of these um, connected with 30 meter hoses between them. So basically we're gonna cover about 90 meters. And this pump I just showed you, the $40 electric pump, is gonna run three of these pretty darn well. If you wanna go more than three, you're gonna need probably a larger size pump to be able to do that. Um, but this works really well with three of these wobblehead sprinklers. We can cover our entire food force with just three of these sprinklers. So it's a, a pretty neat little outfit, easy way to water. It's cheap to make, and you can probably think of a dozen ways to make the little stands yourself. 
we've just zip tied it, the hose to the stands. A small piece of hose with a connector on the end, just like that, so you can connect the other water hose. Now we do sometimes, the very first one in the line, we'll use a Y connector here, um, so that we can then send this water on down to the next sprinkler. So I don't, I don't have the Y connector attached right now, but that's how we have multiple ones. We use a little Y connector, or what they call a Siamese connector. And that works extremely well. It also allows you to turn off the last one in the line or the second to last one in the line. And you can have just one sprinkler run if that's what you want or two sprinklers. Um, so it's a really cheap and easy way to do this. We probably have, you know, 30 bucks in the whole thing for three sprinklers and uh, it works extremely well. Can't recommend this enough. So I wanted to tell you that um, we're growing here, we're trying and we're doing the best we can at uh, making use of the rainwater that we get. Still hasn't rained a lot here this year, but hey, we're, we're still growing, we're still growing on. So we're gonna come back to you with some more of these gardening type videos. I know I've had a lot of requests for it and we're gonna show you some of the things that we do here. May not work for you, but they do work for us. Hope you're having a great day. You know what to do now. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please like, subscribe, and share.